what's up guys i'm gonna tell you about how i got my dog piercings now where do i begin talking about them i guess i can start by telling everyone how and why i got them When I was born, I got chronic migraine. It was pretty bad, and it was just horrible. The migraines would be a very common occurrence if, like, my neck was out or my back was out. It was always something like that, of course. Um, I never really thought of dog piercing mostly because I come from a religious family and we don't really you know, do your piercings, <laughs> you know. Um, for church kids, it's kind of hard to deal with them. So, you either just gotta live it or you... Now is how I got them. I got my dog piercings, well, this one actually, back in June of this year either June or July. It was one of those areas. And due to quarantine, our tattoo parlors everywhere were shut down. Like, everywhere. And it was really hard because I was trying to find a place that would actually do a really good job because when it comes to dog piercings, you only get a certain chance to hit the nerve. And that's why a lot of people say that dog piercings don't work. When they do work, it's just you gotta find the place of the nerve. That's pretty much all I can say about, you know, the science of the dog piercing. And yes, it is pronounced doff, and I know a lot of people call it date, but it's actually doff. It's like goth, but with a D. Um, I finally did find a place, however, and it was actually a hop, skip, and a jump away from my house. So that made things a little bit more convenient. For the, <laughs> the pain, however, the pain is probably a 9. I know a lot of people probably say the pain is a little different depending on where it is. Well, I got my right one, as you can see over here. I named this one Jadon. But I got my right dog pierced there. And when she first did it, it felt <laughs> it kind of felt like someone was sticking their entire hand in your ear. That's seriously what it felt like. And plus I was already growing a zit there. I mean, I know it sounds gross, but um when it finally pulled through, I mean you can hear it. You can hear it going through, you can feel it. It is just in, insane. <laughs> it's uncomfortable and it is a little painful. And if you do have anemia, like I do, so if you're anemic, eat a burger or just eat something with red meat because if you don't and you do get it pierced like I did, uh, it it, it's not pretty. It hurts. And not only does it hurt, but you feel like really dizzy afterwards. And it's not really because of a migraine. It's because of your iron being low. So always eat something before you go and get this done. Because from my experience, it just, it hurts. It ain't pretty. Um, now for another thing about how I got both of them done was, I mean, just keep in mind, these two aren't the original that I've had. I've changed them out twice. That's how many times I've changed mine out. But with my left piercing, how I got that was because it's very rare to get two. It's very rare. I know a lot of people who have only done their right and they feel fine. My friend being one of those. She got her right one done and she's good. She hasn't had a migraine since. Um, a lot of people get their left done. I know of another person who also got their left done. And she's fine as well. But 
there is a rare kind that will have to get both of theirs done. And the reason being is because your migraines, once they, once one of these areas get pierced, guess where the other side goes? It goes to this side or this up, whichever one you really have. All right, cleoids are surgical tissue. What that is, it's where you got all this tissue building up and it forms into this big bump and it, wow, <laughs> they're bad. And this is actually what a cleoid looks like right here. That's a cleoid. Cleoids, um, there is a way to get rid of them, but you sometimes have to get them surgically removed which thankfully I'm not in that boat. <laughs> but with doff piercings and cleoids, they go hand in hand quite often. And it's hard to get rid of them. One of the things that I've learned to do when it comes to cleoids is you wear a certain doff piercing. If you have what is called a barbell, barbells are the little thin ones that most piercers would use. Reason why is because they are actually the easiest to heal and the fastest. I'm not really sure why. I don't really get the science behind it. I guess because it's very thin, it's a thin metal, and it's not really going to hurt you as much. But for me, I use a barbell and I use a tree oil <laughs> right there. I use that with a Q-tip. And I know a lot of people don't really recommend using Q-tips with doll piercings. You can as long as, like I said, you're probably in the six month mark. If you're in the six months of getting a doll piercing, for me, my experience, it won't really do much. Now, if you, it's like a brand spanking new piercing, I wouldn't recommend it. I would just recommend just doing sea salt soaks and just the Letha method. In other words, leave it the heck alone. <laughs> So that's what I've done with my piercing so far. And my left one, Abisha as I call it, had a big cleoid just recently. This is literally like a week ago. And it was big and it was so hard to get rid of. But I had to change it to a barbell and I've been using the tree oil with Q-tips um, probably once a night for the past week. And it's pretty much gone. Like, I haven't seen it. I haven't done anything with it. I mean, it's still there just a little bit, not by a lot. And it's a lot less painful than it was before. So, with doll piercings, again, you just got to be careful. And I might as well get into the cleaning of the doll's jewelry. If you're getting doll's jewelry, like if you're buying it offline or at a store or something. I think Spencer's has some, along with other stores. <laughs> uh, Claire's definitely has doll piercings. Um, what I would do is I would do a sea salt thing and I might as well just douse them in a little bit of tree oil. That's what I did. I put in some tree oil and I put in pretty much the same stuff that I would with the doll piercings. And I have a list right here of what I used to do with mine. This is what I used to do with my dog piercings and just to be safe with them. So with the dog piercing, it's complicated to take care of. They are really hard to deal with. They're a little high maintenance, <laughs> but not by a long shot. I mean, overall, they do work. And like I said, it really just depends on the nerve. Now, for me, what I would do is I would go to a tattoo parlor with a tattoo artist or a piercer, one of the two, I think a piercer most likely. Um, you would have to ask them, you know, how many times have you done this? Um, are you experienced? Do you know about this stuff? And it, it really does help to ask. That's what I had to do. I had to go around and ask people and ask certain things before you just go and get one because anybody can do it. I'm just being honest. Anybody can pierce an ear. It's really not hard. The problem is though, is where you wind up sticking it. 
sticking the needle. For me, this is another thing I used to do before I got my dolls pierced. What I would do, I remember walking in a track. Um, we have a middle school around here that has like this big track thing. And I would walk on it. And I just remember sitting there thinking, you know, I wonder how I could get one. And I wonder if it would even work. And I just got this odd feeling to just pinch it. So this is how you would know where your nerve is and where to pierce it, of course. Um, what you would do is you would just take your index and thumb like this and you would pinch. You would pinch wherever would stop it. And it would stop a migraine or it would stop the coming of one. It would just, it wouldn't, it would stop. And that's how I figured out, you know, hey, this might work. This might not. You don't really know. And that's actually how I get some people to know. I've got two friends that have dog piercings. Well, actually three. And that's kind of how they found out was the index finger and your thumb. And what you do is you just take your two fingernails and you just pinch through there. You don't pinch too hard. But you pinch just hard enough to where you can see, hey, this is going to work. That's what I had to do. And it might work for you. It might not. But I would like to know, like, some of your piercing stories in the comments because, I mean, I'm just being honest. It really has helped. Both of them have really helped me. And I remember getting a migraine every day. Like, it would get so bad. Oh, hold on a second. This is Coco, everyone. Whoop. Coco! Come here. Yeah, that's Coco. She's my girl. But, in all honesty, um, I would just do that. Just do what I did. Because dog piercings... They are complicated, and then they are definitely hard to heal. Like, very hard to heal. So, that's what I would do. I would just go around and ask. I would get it done. I mean, what's it going to hurt? And like I said, it's a very short window for the hole to close back up. So, if you want to, just go ahead. And if it don't work, just take it out. I mean, this is just from my experience. I don't know. Everybody else might have a totally different experience when it comes to doll piercings. And that's why I said to mention in the comments because a lot of people do have different experiences with them. A lot of people do. And nobody is the same, really. And that was just my experience with doll piercings, my experience with clayoids, all of that. So, I just wanted to thank you guys for watching this video and taking the time to watch it and watch me ramble on and on about my piercings. But they are really a godsend. So, with that being said, I'm probably going to jump off here and <laughs> go and do some daily routines. Alright. I'll see you guys around. Bye!